ionic bonds and their dot structures. So there's two types of bonds. First one we're going to talk about is ionic, and that's what these slides are about. The next slides are, um, they cover this thing called covalent bonds, and those are discussed in the next uh, homework. And so ionic bonds. Ionic bonds arise when electrons are transferred from one element to another. And what ends up happening is they form an ionic compound. The thing about ionic compounds is that the net charge overall is zero. All right, so to understand ionic bonds, you have to understand valence electrons. And so valence electrons are electrons in the highest occupied energy level of an atom. And so they're the ones that are the furthest away from its nucleus, the outermost electrons. And so that's where the chemistry is going to happen. And so to determine how many valence electrons an atom has, you have to look at your periodic table. And so you have to look at the group that the atom or the element is in. So in group one, all of these elements have one valence electron. Group two has two valence electrons. Skip the transition metals. They're a little bit more complicated. Don't worry about those yet. Group 13 is three valence electrons. Group 14 has four, so on and so forth, where group 18 has eight valence electrons. Uh, the only exception for group 18 is helium. Oh, it's a very small um, element or atom, and it can only have uh, two electrons around the atom. It can't house any more because it's so small. Okay, the next thing you need to know is about the octet rule. The octet rule states that an atom is most stable when it has eight electrons in its outer shell. And so if you look at the periodic table, group 18, these elements here all have eight valence electrons. They are very stable. Uh, you call that inert. Um, they're also known as the noble gases. Um, they are very stable. And then everything else on the uh, periodic table uh, wants to achieve stability and have an electron configuration of that of these noble gases, which has eight valence electrons. So let's look at an example so we can predict what uh, or how the ionic bond will arise. So sodium and chlorine, if those were to react. You look at your periodic table, so sodium's in group one, that means it has one valence electron. Chlorine over here is in group 17, that means it has seven valence electrons. So you just write the symbol, you put the valence electrons, represent the valence electrons as dots, so one dot on sodium because it's in group one. Then you want seven dots on chlorine uh, because it's in group 17. So they're currently neutral. Chlorine is highly electronegative. It's a nonmetal. It's going to attract this electron very easily because this has low ionization energy, so little energy to required to remove this electron. So, and chlorine's high electronegativity is going to attract it. So, this will now go. Uh, this electron will now join chlorine. But if this loses an electron, it was neutral before, now it has one more proton than electron because it lost one of its electrons. And you'll end up with a positive sodium. Likewise, this gains one more negative charge and you end up with a uh, charge of neg negative on the chlorine, you end up with chloride. And then now you have positive and negative attract, and you end up with sodium chloride. One more example. Magnesium and fluorine. So again, you look at what group each of these is in. Magnesium is in group two. That means it has two valence electrons. Uh, fluorine is in group 17. That means it has seven valence electrons. So you represent magnesium with two dots, fluorine with seven. Again, fluorine will attract one of these electrons. And you'll end up with a negative charge here on the fluorine, but magnesium still has this other uh, electron still not taken, so you'll need another fluorine to attract that. 
and then magnesium lost two negative charges, so it got positive by two, so it's a two plus. And then you have a, uh, this fluorine turns, has a negative charge because it gained one electron. And so you have a negative charge here. And then negative and positive attract, and you end up with magnesium fluoride.